Hey, everybody. This is Joshua Littrell with the Veterans for Cannabis podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm extremely excited about talking with our guest, Kevin Hall, who is actually a Navy veteran, and he's a five-year Navy veteran. Really looking forward to getting into it, and um, we're going to talk about a number of different things we've had over the last couple of days. But, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, uh, it's good to be here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So you and I met yesterday, and it was an amazing, amazing day. It was our casket demonstration at the Atlanta VA here for Veterans Day. Can you tell us a little bit about yesterday and how you felt, and was it your first uh, first event that you would have attended with us? Uh, so yes, sir. It was my first time attending anything. Um, so it was actually very inspirational to see so many people together because um, there's, there's been so many lives that have been touched by this war on drugs that it's just been unnecessary harm and just Really, it was so inspirational to see so many people together under one banner, basically saying, this is not, we've, we've had enough. This is not fair to anyone, and it's just unconstitutional. Oh, man. You know, it's amazing to see men and women like you that show up um, kind of out of nowhere, if you will. And I know you didn't come out of nowhere, but it's one of those where your first event and you come to something that has such an impact in the community, Kevin, that changes people's lives forever. And I hope that yesterday your life was changed. And I also hope that when people listen to this podcast and they hear your story, their life's going to be changed a little bit too. Kevin, if you don't mind, tell us where you're from originally. So I'm from Ackworth, Georgia. Uh, I was in, from Ackworth, Georgia, but to be honest with you, uh, most of my adult life I've spent down in Jacksonville, Florida, where I was stationed. Huh, uh, I awesome. came back home after I got out of the Navy, and uh, I'm back home. Basically. All right. So you served in the Navy, uh, Jacksonville, great little t- town. I don't know if a, no- a lot of people know this, but that is the largest county in the United States. So, yeah, it was, looking, it was a pretty big city. Yeah, huge city. I'm looking at your bio and I learned a lot of things, you know, just reading about you. But I want you to tell if you don't mind. And I know this is really personal, but can you open up a little bit to our audience and let them know about who you are and you know, what happened with your time in service? So uh, back in the day, I was a little bit of a nerdy, geeky kid, went to Etowah High School uh, and decided I was going to go and join the Navy. I wanted to go out there and, uh, you know, basically beat bad guys and warheads and foreheads, all that good stuff. And uh, I, I joined up. I wanted to be a linguist, actually, and, and ended up being a machinist mate uh, on a submarine. And yeah, I mean, it was not what I expected, but it was definitely not a horrible experience. It, uh... You know, I, I think about you and, and I think about, uh, you know, what you've gone through. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, being diagnosed uh, in the military and what happened with you from a medical standpoint? So basically there was a fire on board. Uh, And this fire led it to where my condition made to where I was basically put in an unsafe situation that made me have to drop from a ladder well so that way the rest of the people could get up. So I have a condition that makes it to where I have micro seizures in the limbs uh, and my muscles. And that basically, yeah, it's super inconvenient. So So basically what that means is in stress situations, I lock up. Uh, sometimes this stress situation can be as simple as trying to walk while coming from a standstill, uh, getting up from a chair, getting out of a car, uh, pretty much any kind of cramped position is pretty much awful. Sometimes it affects speech. Uh, it's, it's pretty difficult, but, uh, cannabis has one of the one things I can use that seems to relax the muscles to where it's tolerable. Okay. But doesn't, you know, have any side effects like, for instance, not being able to drive because I'll fall asleep Mm -hmm. or uh, they put me on muscle relaxers and that's just not a good way to live at all. Kevin, can we talk about that a little bit? Because I've been on a number of different muscle relaxers in my uh, life as well, as as well as Neurotin, Gabapentin, all that stuff. And for me, and I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, when I take muscle relaxers, I, I don't drink anymore. But the next morning, it's like I drank a 12-pack of beer, and I'm hungover. 
for six, eight hours of my day uh, the next day. Does it affect you the same way or similarly? So uh, when I was taking muscle relaxers, uh, I'll be honest with you, it made me so lethargic that sometimes that when I got home from work, after getting yelled at for being lethargic, by the way. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I got home from work. I would collapse and just go to bed oh, right where oh. I laid and wake up the next day. So I, uh, and they didn't even really work. So I really, it didn't really work at all. It just made me miserable. And then, yeah, the next morning, you normally feel like you, like you got hit with a freight train. Right. Because your muscles are all like coming back online, and they're like, "What'd you do, man? That that was bad." Yeah, that's the most frustrating part about it is the pharmaceuticals uh, are our only choice from the VA. Now, do you utilize the VA as your healthcare option? I do. Uh, the only healthcare option that I have available to me uh, as a vet and as an entrepreneur. It's, it's sometimes difficult to be able to, you know, get the expensive health care out there. So sure. due to that, yeah, I stick to the, the VA. Yeah, it, you know, it's hard. It's hard a lot of times, too, because uh, my wife's still active duty. So, you know, I have TRICARE, Kevin, but I also utilize the VA as my only health care option. And that's because, uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of our brothers and sisters don't have the choice, just like you're talking about. Small business owner, you know, self-employed, you don't have the choice, so you got to use it. I took that stance as, Dad, blame it. I'm going to do the exact same thing my brothers and sisters are going through, and I'm going to use it until we can force the change to happen that makes it better for us. So how can we make it better for us in our veteran community? What can we do to help educate the VA on the lack of care that we're getting from them? Well, one thing I'd say is that medical cannabis is something that everyone should have the right to, no matter where you are. Uh, and I'd say as someone who was broken by the military, I believe that it's okay that I use my form of medicine. I have the choice. You broke me. I'm going to fix me. Yeah. So and I don't believe that anyone in the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness can honestly take that from me. No, I agree. So therefore, any law that says that, otherwise would be unconstitutional. So true, and that's what we were doing yesterday, right? So we're sitting in front of the VA. We have a casket set up. We have it filled with prescription bottles, a flag draped over the top of it, and we're just saying, hey, VA, we just want a choice, right? That's all we're advocating for. That's what you and I are fighting for is that choice. That's what we are going to get. Absolutely. And so because we, of that, and because of that, I believe that we will bring down the amount of people who are killing themselves on a daily basis. Because oh I've gosh, seen personally, absolutely. I've I've seen personally the effects of PTSD. It, it's it's horrible, and you're going to deny someone something that is their nature, their natural right. Right. Kevin, if you don't mind, um, can you expand just a little bit more on the experiences that you've seen when you've observed the PTS that's, that uh, you know many of our communities struggle with or even the chronic pain management? Um, what, what kind of experiences have you seen per firsthand? So I have a really close friend of mine. I'm not going to say his name, but he was in the military. He was in the Army, and he has an injury where his nerve went out in his left mm. shoulder. And he has really bad PTSD. Uh, so this man, his nerve, because it went out, muscle atrophy ate at his arm, and his arm then would fall out of his socket. Mm. And because of this, it might hurt a little, you know? It, it sounds like that would be pretty painful. So the VA took him, and they, they started to give him a surgery, and they, they gave him a lot of uh, painkillers. They gave him a lot of a lot of painkillers. He he said that he was on opiates. He had to. He had an addiction to it, and all that good stuff. Wow. Uh, and then his PTSD. On top of that, he had medications for that. He said he was taking so many pills. He was taking pills for pills. Right. 
Yeah, that's what a lot of people don't understand is, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical company's got a great, uh, uh, for lack of better words, scam going on because they've got pills for pills for pills, right? They've got the pills that you give you to take care of something. And then, hey, you got side effects from that. We're going to give you a pill for that and two more for the side effects from that pill. It's a racket. It, it, it's so tragic because he told me the experience of how long he had to wait to get surgery. And they told him that he was a liar half the time. And he literally had to show the x-ray technician how he could pull his arm out of his socket. Wow. You know, Kevin, I, I think you and I both know that there's, there's, there is no lying with that. Um, I mean, it took me 18 months just to get an MRI for the first time when I was having migraine headaches and they, they were trying to figure out if I had a brain tumor, right? 18 months to get an MRI from the Veterans Administration Hospital in Atlanta which just so happens to be the exact same hospital we were at yesterday for our demonstration. When you looked at that audience that was there yesterday, was it a white audience? Was it a black audience? Was it a Chinese audience? What was that audience comprised of? I would say that was a very diverse audience. And uh, I would say that it would almost say that it would be a great wide demographic because almost everyone agrees that it should be legalized. It was, and that's one of the things that I enjoyed the most about being there with our other brothers and sisters. And the one thing about the military is, look, we get thrown into situations where we have to just coalesce and learn how to get along and make things happen, right? So I've said it for years that the military knocks all the racism out because you got no choice but to learn how to work together and make things happen. When I looked around yesterday and saw so many different colors of faces, so many different accents, so many different people from so many different places, it just warmed my heart. Such an emotional day, but at the same time, such an uplifting day that we can all come together at, at such a great event and help advocate for access. Access is very important, and it's it's so paramount for some that literally they're leaving state. And then they, their VA benefits are risk, at risk if they get anywhere near the marijuana industry. It's, it's not fair. It's a legal industry, and yet you can risk losing your GI Bill, risk losing all, all your, your benefits because you're working with that industry. Well, Kevin, I've got some great news for you. The one good thing is that they cannot take your GI Bill from you. They actually cannot take your VA payments from you either. The only thing that the VA can do is actually take your pain medicine from you. So if you're in a, a, a pain management program with the Veterans Administration, you are utilizing cannabis. They can pull your pain medicine from you. However, they cannot pull your payments from you. They cannot pull your GI Bill benefits from you. They have to still see you as a patient because they work for us. And the good thing is the VA just changed their stance this year earlier where now – we're encouraged to talk to our physicians about cannabis access and cannabis use to make sure that they know that we're utilizing it and they can actually monitor us and help us reduce our, our medicine, our pharmaceutical dependency if we want to. Now, I say that with a caveat that each phys physician and provider is different. So if you run into a situation where you're talking to a provider and they don't believe in it or they, they say you're a sinner or you're you know a piece of trash, you fire that physician. Because that's the one thing our brothers and sisters forget is that physician works for us. We can fire our physician at any point in time that we want and find a new physician. So have you ever gone into that situation where you've had to fire a physician or been in that situation where you felt uncomfortable because they didn't believe in what you were talking about? Oh, absolutely. When I uh, One thing that uh, I told my uh, therapist while I was at the VA was that, that I was a campus user and she she bet she definitely recommended that I stop because she said that it could cause psychosis. And wow. to me, that's not a very that's not a very nice thing to say in general because there are it's so many scary. people out here who are using it to fight anxiety. Correct. Correct. It, it's you know, just so funny that it's just to me it sounds like propaganda. Well, it is, and and unfortunately, it's it's not done intentionally. It's because the only thing they're taught in pharmacy school or in medical school is, hey, here's the prescription medicine that can take care of X, right? Instead of actually teaching about the endocannabinoid system, 
talking about holistic approaches to medicine, teaching about you know Chinese medicine, which is all herbal based for the last 10 to 15,000 years they've been utilizing it. And now we're seeing medical schools that are actually going back in the direction of something that's 10 to 15,000 years old, which is